Okay, let's start by uh, talking about our uh, about things we already know. For instance, the Circum Center. Ideally, what I'd like to do when this slide is done, I'll have, or when this lesson is done, I'll have a slide for each of the four centers, and you'll see that things are going to get a little bit crazy because all of a sudden we've got four circle, four centers to worry about instead of just one. Okay, so let's start with Circum Center. Tell me about it. What is it? Yeah. Good. It's the point of concurrency, POC, of the perpendicular bisectors. Okay, good. Which means we need to be able to find perpendicular bisectors, which by now should be good to go for most, if not all. Yeah. Find the slope of one of the sides. Find the perpendicular slope. Find the midpoint. Combine those three into equations. And then solve the system. So we have this. There's one. There's two. Whoops. There's three. Okay, so they're perpendicular, meaning these are all right angles, and they're bisectors. So each of these segments is going to be congruent. Now, the other thing we talked about very briefly was some of you used acute triangles. Where was the circumcenter? Inside, correct. Obtuse? Outside. Outside. And right. Good. Midpoint of hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Okay, good. And you've had tons of practice finding that center. Any problems there? All right, let's move on to the next one. The next one we're not going to do any calculations with. You'll understand why in a second. So we're going to take a triangle again. This one pink. Uh -huh. And this time, we're going to use angle bisectors. Okay, so angle bisector from here, angle bisector from here, and angle bisector from here. And they will meet at a point in the center of the triangle. That's called the in-center. of concurrency of angle bisectors. <coughs> now, why are we doing calculations with this? The reason is that we don't know the math to find the equations of those angle bisectors. It requires trigonometry, which we haven't covered yet, but we will cover that by the end of the chapter. So eventually we'll be able to find that point of concurrency, but right now we don't necessarily care about it. I just wanted to, uh, to make sure we've covered all four. All right, now let's get into the other ones that we can actually calculate with. Okay, so we did circum center was the perpendicular bisector, in center is the angle bisectors. Next, we're going to do what's called a centroid. Okay. So if I find the midpoint of one of the sides and I connect 
segment. You know, I don't want to use green here. Let me change the color there. Let's go pink. This is a hideous color combination. Okay. And then go from here to here. And then from here to here. Okay. That's called the centroid. The centroid is the point of concurrency of the medians. And since we don't know what a median is, I should probably tell you what that is. A median is a segment connecting a vertex and the midpoint of the opposite side. How would I find the location of that centroid? Given, of course, you know the coordinates of the three points of the triangles. So let's say we call this triangle uh, ABC. I know where A is. I know where B is. I know where C is. How do I find the centroid at D? Good, but talk me through that process. So let's suppose, uh, let's call this um, M, N, and P. Let's suppose I want to do the equation of uh, M, D. How would I do that? So we can find the location of M. Yeah. Good. Okay, so we'll put a dot there. Check. Then what? I don't know how you would find the slope. Okay, if we know where M is and we know where B is, how do we find the slope of MB? Distance. Yeah. Distance. Just do a slope calculation, right? Yeah. So then we can find the slope of MB. Check. Then what? Perfect. Okay. Do I have to use M? in the equation. I could use V, right? But I still have to find M because I need that point to find the slope. Repeat that three times. Take two of those equations. Solve the system. Beautiful. Okay. We'll come back to this uh, acute obtuse and right later. And that's why I said the circumcenter was so important because the process that we use for the circumcenter is almost repeated in this one, except for a couple little tweaks. The tweaks being there's no perpendicular going on here. And we have to find a slope using two of the points that we have to find one of them for. Okay, but again, reviewing that process. Find the midpoint, calculate the slope of the segment, combine the midpoint and the slope to come up with the equation of line, get the equation of the line, solve the system, Good to go. Okay. Last one. It's called the ortho center. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> this one's a little trickier. That's the point of intersect, a point of concurrency, sorry, of the altitudes. 
And since we don't know what an altitude is, I'll tell you. Now, spelled it wrong. Altitude. Uh, line. An altitude is a line perpendicular to a side through a vertex. <coughs> These are perpendicular and they pass through the vertices. When I find the ortho center. Maddie, question? Yeah. How, like, how is that different than the central? Excellent question. Somebody want to answer that? No. Correct. Okay. So if I go back, notice the centroid doesn't have to be perpendicular. In fact, seldomly will it be perpendicular. Even if it is, we don't care. Because we're just connecting those points. The other question is, how does the Altitudes differ from the circumcenter. The only, go ahead. Is it that they, they go to the vertexes, not anywhere? Good. Circumcenter passes through the midpoint. Altitude passes through the vertex. Okay, so if I do another sketch here and I draw a triangle. If I do the perpendicular bisector of this segment XY, whoops, what's going on here? Perpendicular bisector of XY, it's going to go through the midpoint and it's going to be perpendicular to the line. So it looks something like that. Okay, that's the perpendicular bisector. That's for the circumcenter. The altitude, however, is perpendicular but passes through the vertex. So it looks something like that. This is an altitude. This is a perpendicular bisector. What do you notice about the perpendicular bisector and the altitude? Parallel. They're parallel, very good. So they'll have the same slopes. This angle is determined by the perpendicular to the other side. Okay, so in other words, I'm going to take this perpendicular segment, so I created a segment that's perpendicular to this side, and I'm going to slide it around until it passes through the vertex. Whereas if it were a circumcenter, I'd slide it around until it passes through the midpoint. Okay? All right, we're going to do two things then. Number one, I'm going to take you through a problem, one of these other ones. And then number two, we're going to, or you are going to answer the question obtuse, acute, and right for the centroid and for the orthocenter where they're located. Okay? So we'll do that after we work through an example. So let's take a triangle. And I'm just, whoa, I'm just drawing a triangle as a, uh, as a reference. I have no idea what it looks like. And we're going to generate some points here. We'll call this um, E, L, K. Uh, Eric, where's E? Yeah, I know. Good, thank you. <laughs> What's the coordinates of E? Uh, 32. Thank you. Uh, KK, where's K? Um, they got 
Okay. Lily. Where's Al? Seven thirty. Okay. Big decision time. Which one you want to do? Ortho center or centroid? How many want a centroid? Raise your hand. How many want an ortho center? How many don't care? Beautiful. All right, centroid it is. All right, Maddie, you explained this earlier, so I'm going to rely on you for some help here. What do I need to do? You uh, two groups find the midpoint of KE. You two groups find the midpoint of KL. You three groups are finding the midpoint of EL. Do that quickly, please. Also, come up with a letter that you want to call your midpoint. All right, here we go. Uh, Adele, where's the midpoint of KE? First of all, what letter do you want to call it? X. X? S. S, as in salamander? Yeah. Okay, where is it located? Can the rest of you confirm, please? Yes, yes, we're good. No mistakes here because it'll screw up the whole thing. Don't just believe her because she's really bright. We're good? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Now, obviously, if you're doing this problem, you're going to show those calculations. You're not just going to have things appear out of nowhere. And also, because these calculations get very complicated, you want to make sure that things are labeled carefully. So what I would do is something like this. This is the midpoint of KE, which I'm going to call S. And S is located at negative 5 plus 3 over 2 comma 1 plus 2 over 2, which then gives me S being at, as she said, negative 1 comma 3 halves. Okay, we're not going to do that because I'm trying to save time. Uh, Patrick, where's uh, the midpoint of KL? One, two. Confirmation? Yeah. Beautiful. And uh, Caitlin, where's the midpoint of EL? Confirmation? Yeah. Good. What letter is it? Q. Can't use Q. We already used, they stole Q from you. G. G as in gopher? Okay. G. Beautiful. All right, Maddie, back to you. I got my midpoints. Now what? Okay. So you're going to find the distance. No. No, not the distance. The slope uh -huh. of E to Q. Okay, hold on a second. Let me get caught up here. Uh, let's use green. E to Q. Uh, which groups did Q? You two? Yeah. Okay, good. Then you two calculate the slope of EQ. All right. Uh, Manny, talk me through the other three. The other three are? L to S. Uh-huh. And then G to K. Okay, so uh, you guys are doing the slope of, I forgot what I said, EQ. You three are doing the slope of 
SL, and you two are doing a slope of KG. Jack, what do you got? Um, 1.5 over 10. Not acceptable. Can't have decimals in a fraction. Yes, you do. You got a calculator, don't you? We'll come back to you. Al, what do you got? Uh, 3 over 2 over 8. Not acceptable. Can't have a fraction within a fraction. You got it? Is it 3 16 3 16 so. Okay. Confirm? No? Yes? 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 Which one are you? Uh, S SL. Okay, 3 16 We're going with that? Okay. If you can't work with fractions, then use the calculator. Decimals within fractions, not acceptable. Fractions within fractions, not acceptable. Your calculator will simplify it for you. So Jack doesn't know what 1.5 over 10 is. If you put 1.5 divided by 10 into your calculator, put it back into a fraction, it'll convert it. What is it? Negative 3 over 20. Negative 3 over 20. Can you guys confirm? Yeah. Yeah? I know it's positive. It's positive. All right, you two work that out. We'll come back to you. Nathan, what do you got? I don't know whichever one you're supposed to be doing. Zero. 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 We chose bad numbers. Or we chose good numbers, depending on how you want to look at it. Okay, so if the slope of EQ is zero, what can you tell me about it? Horizontal or vertical? Are you sure? Good. <laughs> what do we got? Three over twenty. Yeah. Okay. You guys agree? Yeah. Yeah. You don't care, do you? I didn't care. You do great on the quiz tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It might be a miserable experience for you. Sorry, Friday. Wait, well, that's the one for Friday, it was just the other method. He's still going to be miserable. Huh? Okay, Daddy, back to you. Now what? You're going to find the equation. So it the equation for every single line. Okay. So, if we do the equation of SL, uh, here, let me scoot this up a little bit. SL would be uh, y plus, nope, y minus, y minus 3 halves equals 3 sixteenths times the quantity x plus 1. 3 halves is 5 halves for SL? No, SL is 3 halves. Oh, I thought, okay. Yeah. Then kg would be, where's kg? Okay, what's k? I can't, I moved it up too far. There we go. Y, whoops. Y minus 5 halves equals 3 twentieths times x minus 5. And because we just happened to get a weird one here, we can do EQ, but it's going to be a train wreck because the slope is zero. 
So y minus 2 equals 0 times x minus 1. Excuse me. <coughs> oh boy. Woo, that's good. That's going to sound great on the video, by the way. We're not going to use that one. All right. Solve that system. Go. One is a little rough.
Okay, I know some of you are still working. Question? Okay, so um, we're going to work through this uh, system together. Well, I'm going to do it so that you can see what it looks like when you solve it. However, I will show you a little trick. You'll notice on the screen in orange, I've got the answer to the problem. And the question is, how was I able to get that answer so quickly? Did I write that problem ahead of time and know the answer? The answer is no. We randomly created those points. The centroid has a unique property. And that unique property is, well, there's a couple. Number one, it's the balancing point of the triangle, which is completely irrelevant. But because it's the balancing point, you can easily find the centroid by taking the average of the x's and taking the average of the y's. So this will act as a nice check to see whether or not you have the answer correct. Do you understand what I mean by that? Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2, plus 7 is 5, divided by 3, 5 thirds. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 2 is 6, divided by 3 is 2. So I know going into the problem what I should get for an answer. Now, how are we going to get that out of that equation? And by the way, that only works for centroids. Yeah, take the average of the x coordinates. Which ones? All of them? All three of them. Add them up, divide by three. Take the average of the y coordinates, add them up, divide by three. Okay. And that tells you where you need to go when you solve this system. Triangle. The original triangle. The original or not the, or the new? The original triangle. Now, how I solve the system might not be the way you like to solve the system, but since I'm doing the work, I'm going to do it my way, and I'm going to need some help, so make sure you have your calculators handy. I start by converting each of the equations into slope-intercept form. Whoops. Go back up there. So y minus 3 halves is equal to 3 sixteenths x plus 3 sixteenths. Okay, what's 3 sixteenths plus 3 halves? Do that. Let's go. Focus. 3 sixteenths plus 3 halves. This will be good practice using your calculator. And convert it back into a fraction. 27 sixteenths. Okay, so that's my first equation. Second equation. Fifteen twentieths would be three fourths. What's negative three fourths plus five halves? Seven over four. Seven over four, thank you. Okay, so the reason I convert both equations into slope intercept is because two things. Number one, I can then just set them equal to each other. And it makes it easier to find y later on. Okay, so if I combine these two, I get 3 sixteenths x plus 27 sixteenths is equal to 3 twentieths x plus 7 fourths. I don't like fractions, so I'm going to multiply first by 16. Yes, there's probably a big honking number I can multiply by to get rid of all of them at once, but I don't really care. 3x plus 27 is equal to uh, 48 twentieths x plus 28. And yes, I can simplify 48 twentieths to 12 fifths, yeah.
oops, 5. Then I'm going to multiply everything by 5. If you don't like doing this, then don't. I just like to get rid of all the denominators so I don't have to worry about it. You could just work with the ugly fractions. Bring this up here. I get 15x plus uh, 27 times 5, 135? Yeah. Equals 12x plus 140. Because it's 5 more than 27 times 5. 3x is equal to 5. Oh, 5 thirds. There's my x value, which is what I expected it to be. Sometimes when you do these problems and you solve this on the circumcenters, you get ugly numbers. That's OK. Because now all I do is I take 5 thirds. Do this with me, please, on your calculator. 5 thirds store x. So now whenever the calculator sees an x, it's going to put in 5 thirds. Then I go back to one of these equations, doesn't matter which one, and type it into my calculator. However, when you type it into the calculator, you got to put these fractions in parentheses. So parentheses, 3 divided by 16, close parentheses, x plus parentheses, 27 divided by 16, close parentheses, enter. Convert it back into a fraction. If you need to, you won't, because it should just give you Two. Please tell me it gives me two. Okay. So like the circumcenter, there's two parts of this gig. One is the geometry, being able to use the geometry to get the equations of the lines. The second part is the algebra, solving the system to find the point of concurrency. Sigar. How do you unstore? You don't. You just store over. Um. It's always going to store a number. You can't clear that. So you can just store numbers over what's already stored. Okay. Problems? Questions? Your Yes, sir. So to find the answer, like you did, five thirds and then the two, yeah. you take the average of like, the points that are already there? The given triangle, yeah. yeah. So that'll act as a nice check. That doesn't work with any other center, just the centroid. Some of you are going to use that for all of them. It doesn't work that way. Okay? We good? So you have uh, a couple things. Let's talk about the next couple days. So I'm going to unlock... Two homework assignments today, and I'll post another one tomorrow. All right. So here's what's going to happen. Um, you have homework tonight, you'll have homework tomorrow, and you'll have homework Friday. However, as I mentioned, I won't be here tomorrow or Friday. So I'm going to unlock everything, and you can work at whatever pace you want. You have the entire period tomorrow to work on this stuff. Okay. I'll try to get answers to you also so you can check your work. Mr. Schaefer, who will be here, is one of the nicest people in the world. He is a math guy. He'll probably be able to help you a little bit with some of the algebra. I don't know how good he is on the geometry, but with the algebra, he'll be able to help you a little bit. Friday is the quiz, and I've already told you what's on the quiz. And then you'll have homework over the weekend. Okay. On top of those three homework assignments, which will be due on Monday, I also need you to figure out where the center, where the ortho center is for the three different triangles, like, I don't know, maybe GeoGebra would help nicely with that, and for the centroid. Where is the centroid if it's acute or obtuse right? Where is the ortho center for acute obtuse right? Pregunta. So do you solve the ortho center the same way that you solve the centroid? Nope. Good question. How would I solve for the ortho center? Joseph. Nope. Midpoints are not involved. Isabel. So again, answer my question. How would I find it? Oh, um, <coughs> you find the slope of the first like point of like the slope of the first like triangle sides. Good. And then um, flip it so you could have the slope of that. Good. Take the flop opposite to get the slope. Um, use the vertex of the other one to make a line. Perfect. 
Okay. I think the ortho center is the easiest to find. Because really all you have to do is one calculation. You've got to do a slope calculation. You use the floppacit slope and the vertex to set up your equation. Then solving the system is the same as the other. Okay. Any questions about what's going on here for the next couple days? Beautiful. Monday, when I come back, we will uh, review all of this stuff to get you ready for a quiz on Tuesday covering all of the centers. Patrick. So, uh, on Friday's only on circumcenters? Only circumcenters. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Hot diggity. Okay, let me unlock those uh, homeworks for you. So, tomorrow's class, are you just working on the homework? You got it. <laughs>